Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today we're in engine room number three, home of main engine number two, to talk about uh, some of the engineering plants on a lot of the ships that we've visited lately. During World War II, when New Jersey was built, it was pretty common for ships, uh, specifically like frontline warships like New Jersey, to have a power plant like this one, that is steam turbines, sometimes geared turbines. So what that means is we've got a turbine here, basically a windmill, and uh, we are heating up water in the fire room on the other side of that bulkhead there. And then that water is turning into superheated steam thanks to combustion. We're, we're burning fuel and air to boil water. That superheated steam comes into these turbines, spins them like a windmill, and all the blades of that internal windmill, your turbine blades, are all riding on a central shaft. So now that shaft is spinning. And that shaft essentially goes straight back to the propeller. Steam turbines, it is steam that's spinning the shaft. Also geared turbines, because it's spinning the shaft too fast, so there is a reduction gear set with each engine, which is this right here. And, and the gearing, sort of like the battleship's transmission, is reducing that speed to a more optimal one. Most World War II warships, like I said, are using a system that's very similar to this one that I just described in the most simplistic terms possible. Well, get ready for me to describe a bunch of uh, other simplistic engineering systems that were alternatives. So in the last couple of weeks, we've gotten invited on a couple of really cool field trips. One was to visit the SS John W. Brown down in Baltimore uh, and actually sail on her underway. So we got to see a steam plant, very similar though not identical to ours, in operation. John W. Brown was completed just one year after Battleship New Jersey. Battleship New Jersey was actually laid down two years before John W. Brown. So they, they are very much contemporaries and do a lot of things the same and a few things different. We'll talk about why that is in a second. We also visited NS Savannah, which is another merchant ship, actually on the opposite side of the pier from John W. Brown, uh, that is also using steam turbines to power the ship. But they're doing it a little bit different too. And in the past, we've gotten the chance to visit a number of uh, different ships that have different types of power plants also. But again, they, they all share a lot of similarities in that at the end of the day, we're trying to spin a shaft to spin our propellers. And, and that's all that we're doing. So, we've talked about steam turbines. Another similarity, actually the older style system, is a triple expansion steamship. This is what John W. Brown has. It's what Texas was built with. And uh, Texas, of course, New York class battleship. The New York class battleships were the last full class of American battleships to be built with triple expansion steam engines. This would be uh, circa 1912-ish. So even by World War I, American battleships are being built with turbines like this one. Uh, in fact, HMS Dreadnought, the very first modern battleship, uh, had a turbine system not too different from this. But because the Liberty ships needed to be churned out very quickly and cheaply, uh, they chose to go with that older style system. One, it freed up turbine manufacturing companies like Westinghouse that made Battleship New Jersey's uh, to work on big Navy ships like this, while other companies could churn out the many, many, many uh, engines that were needed by the merchant marine ships. John W. Brown's uh, triple expansion engine, or Texas's for that matter, um, works kind of similarly to ours in that they're using basically the same kind of boiler system. They might be burning a different grade of fuel depending on the time period, um, but they're still burning fuel to boil water into steam and then shooting that steam into an engine. In our case, again, it's a turbine sort of works like a windmill. In their case, it is uh, a piston engine. So the steam goes into a series of three pistons as it is expanding and it's driving those pistons up and down and as those pistons pump up and down, it is moving a crankshaft. Uh, if you've ever seen a train, the 
thing that's like on the wheels there. It's the same basic idea. That crankshaft uh, is now moving in a circular motion and that's what's spinning your propeller shaft. Triple expansion engines almost always are operating at a lower speed than turbines, which means that they don't need a big, expensive, complicated gear reduction box. It takes a lot of training to learn how to use and a lot of maintenance to keep it lubricated and all that. Uh, so in some ways, it is a simpler system. On the other hand, Savannah, NS Savannah, the NS stands for nuclear ship as opposed to SS John W. Brown, steamship, is uh, using a turbine system the same as ours. Her engine room, in fact, looks extremely similar to ours, except they're heating up their water differently. Whereas we're burning fossil fuels to do that, uh, they are using a spicy rock to make their water hotter. Uh, essentially, they have a nuclear reactor that um, as they pull out the control rod, it creates the reaction in the fissionable material that generates a tremendous amount of heat. That heat is boiling water into superheated steam, which then goes into the turbines. So basically the same style system as this on NS Savannah or a nuclear carrier or a nuclear submarine. And that's what's then uh, powering the ship. They don't have to carry fuel in a bunch of fuel tanks because they've got that fissionable material in the re reactor, which lasts years and years and years, or decades and decades with uh, more modern reactors. We've been on some other ships that have slightly different systems. These all work roughly the same. We got the strip parts off of Perry-class frigates. They didn't let us film on board, unfortunately, so we can't show you footage of that. But the Perrys have gas turbines. Those very similar to steam turbines like this, but they don't need a boiler at all. Uh, whereas we're boiling water to send the steam in to spin the turbine blades, they are uh, basically shooting fuel into it. The fuel is combusting, and then the gas from that combustion is what's spinning the blades in the turbine. Another type of propulsion equipment that's a little bit different than uh, what we're using, but um, still contemporary, is diesel. So any of your World War II submarines that are preserved as museum ships, uh, USS Slater, USS Lucid, they're all using diesels. The diesels, whereas gas turbines are essentially the more modern version of a steam turbine, diesels are kind of the more modern version of a triple expansion engine in that you're shooting diesel fuel into a piston system, compressing it until it combusts, and then when it combusts, it is moving that piston, which is driving a crankshaft, which is attached to the motor generator to create electrical power. Once you've created the electrical power, it then goes into a, an electric motor that spins your propeller shaft. So that is your thousand foot, really simplified overview of the various types of propulsion plants that uh, are common on ships nowadays. Um, now that we've gotten the chance to see engine rooms of all of these types of ships and gotten footage for you, I guess all that's left is going on a sailing ship. What kind do you think is best? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to support the museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum and our channel, and that's what lets us travel and see all these different types of ships. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum. Thanks for watching.